So a little while ago, a friend and I were talking about some projects that I wanted to try and make, and she sent me a photo of something that she was going to have me make for her new house that they just built. However, she changed her mind, and now I'm gonna be building her something else, but I still try to recreate this photo. I challenged myself to this big project because I decided that I would love to have this, this beautiful farmhouse display in my kitchen. So today's video, I'm gonna take you guys along and I'm gonna show you exactly how I recreated this project coming up. Hey guys, my name is Annalie Ashby and this is my DIY channel. This is something that I wanted to challenge myself to try and recreate and not just the main part of it that hangs on the wall, but also the cutting boards. So let's jump right into the video and show you guys exactly how I make this and then you guys can let me know how I do at the end. So getting started, we are going to be using some of this common board that you can get from Home Depot. I actually really like to get this from their like rough furring section because it, the wood is just really rustic, it's farmhouse, and that way if I want to sand it down, I can and make it smooth. So these are technically one by three inch sizes, and you can see the detail in the wood here. I wanted to sand it down just a little bit, so I went ahead and just used my automatic sander, which has honestly been my best friend. I went ahead and just sanded this down, and I just did a light sanding because I liked the rusticness of it. So I went ahead and stapled it all together. So we're making a rectangular frame to do the outside of it first. And then we're going to section it off and then do the beadboard on the back. So right here, this is just a sheet of beadboard. It's four feet by eight feet. You can get it at Home Depot. It's approximately like 23 or $24. And so I can, um, cut this down a couple ways but here is a little tip for you if you guys want to cut some beadboard if you tape it first with some painters tape wherever you're gonna run your saw blade then it helps to not chip up the beadboard because it is made of particle board and sometimes that laminate front of it can just chip off and so if you do that and just cut it through the tape and this is a, a tip for like anything you cut you can see that it keeps all of your stuff intact and there's no chipping. Okay, so I cut this into two sections because I wanted to be able to separate it down the middle if I needed to, and I wanted to be able to make it fit, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why one piece wouldn't have worked either, but I did cut it into two sections for sake of ease for me, and then I went ahead and I pre-drilled holes all down the inside of the frame to where I was gonna be drilling in the boards for the shelves. So right here, you can see that I've got the bead board down below, it's not attached yet, but I've got it to where I still can see where I'm going to put the bead board on the back, if that makes any sense at all. So then using the pre-drilled holes, just from the outside right here, I went ahead and I am drilling in my screws. Again, another tip here is to use finishing screws they really do very well. They they just seem to, I mean, they hold really well because they're screws in general, but they just seem to sink in and um, not split your woods as badly. And I don't mind that the screws are gonna be showing on the outside here because again, this is farmhouse. So this is a just thin little piece of wood. Honestly, it's scrap wood. You could also just use a square dowel. And I just measured this and cut this down to length because You'll see that at the end of the project, when we put the shelves in, just above the shelves on the outer edge, there are some pieces of wood that help to hold everything on the shelf. So these I measured and they're approximately about three inches above the shelf. And then I went ahead and I just stapled those in place. And you can see that this will help hold anything that we put in this little wall frame. So. We are, um, from the inspiration picture, we are gonna be um, copying it as closely as, as I can. And so um, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be able to put the cutting boards in here and have that hold, of course. So then I went and um, I got this stained. Now, you're probably wondering why I stained this first, especially because I do cover it up with a very heavy layer of chalk paint. But 
I really wanted a rustic farmhouse look. I believe in the inspiration picture, it's just kind of a solid white. So I wanted mostly white, but I also wanted it to come through. So once I stained it and let that dry, I just went in with a chippy brush and some Waverly white chalk paint. And I just gave it a very rough coating of this, like a dry brush. And then I also end up going back over it again with a very heavy hand. So honestly, it really does look white, but when you get up close to it, you see a, just a little bit of that dark poking through. And that's exactly what I wanted was just a very rustic farmhouse style look peeking through for me. And so this worked out really, really good. I went through um, and just did kind of a, a lighter layer on top with a dry brush and then let that dry. And then again, went in with a um, heavier hand that you'll see here in just a minute. Here is a close up of it once it is all dry. So that top piece right there, I did not, I have not done yet, but I guess it's not technically all dry, but you can see the detail of the dark just barely peeking through. And in some areas it looks mostly white, but I love like the knots and the deeper parts of the wood that they stayed darker. And so I guess it's kind of a, like a reverse distressing. So oftentimes I'll paint something white and then I'll go through and put some like darker black or brown, just a darker color to distress the edges. And so I kind of just reversed it and did the dark on the bottom and then the um, dry brushing technique for the top. But really from a distance, you can see that it looks mostly white. So since I had some distressing on the outer frame, I felt like the white beadboard was just gonna be um, a little too perfectly white. So with a very, very light dry brush, I just went in with the grooves and dry brushed a little bit of the darker brown. Um, I honestly don't even remember what color paint I did, but I think I mixed it with some water, dabbed it in there just a little bit and did it very, very light. Now, because this beadboard is particle board, I wanted to hammer it on because I wanted it to stay in place, but I didn't want to use my pneumatic tools just because that kind of punches a hole pretty deep. And even though you can turn the pressure down, I just wanted it to be a nice surface hold, not like a staple or a brad nail that just would really puncture through it and honestly kind of go too far through it. So here I went ahead and I cut my pieces. Nope. Wow. That was not cut at all. I nailed all my pieces onto the back. Okay, so I wanted to do some cutting boards. Now, typically, because um, I'm not gonna be eating on these, I went ahead and just used this thinner plywood that I had on hand just because it was in my scrap pile and that way I was able to use what I had. But if I were going to be make, if I were going to be making an actual cutting board, I definitely would have used thicker wood and so that it could have been a stout cutting board. But right here, I just went ahead and I used the round signs from the Dollar Tree. And then I, I traced that out and made a circle. And then I just freehanded a handle onto that with a, with a pencil, basically. Drew that on with eyeballing it with what I wanted. And then just using my jigsaw here, I went ahead and I got that cut out. And really, if you take your time with this, it works really well. This was a really cheap way for me to make cutting boards because again, this was just in my stash. This piece of wood was in my stash. And so cutting boards, even if you get them um, at Hobby Lobby for like 50% off or Target, um, you can get really, really good deals, but still they add up and I wanted a lot of cutting boards. So I'll probably replace these fake, if you will, cutting boards throughout the years with real cutting boards, but until then, just to get the look that I wanted, especially for this video, this totally worked out to do it that way. So 
Um, once I got that cut out, I knew that I wanted some different sizes. So right here, I wanted to do a very large rectangle and I wanted to do it with a handle because in the inspiration picture, there was one with a handle. So I just traced a real cutting board right up there. You can see a white cutting board, just one of those plastic ones. I traced that out first and made my rectangle shape and then using my ruler so that I could get everything spaced out really well and accurate, I traced out a handle and then I just followed the same process for cutting it out with my jigsaw. And then these um, had some rounded corners. Um, well, the cutting board had rounded corners. So I just used that to give me the rounding for my handle and that worked out perfect, you guys. So once that was done, um, again, using my jigsaw is so easy. I just clamp these um, clamps on right here so that it has a secure place to stay with the table and then I just went ahead and I cut this out and I really did take my time just to make sure that I had really good precision. When using my jigsaw and I want to cut something out in the middle, like if I want to cut a hole or a square out, I use my drill with a very, very large drill bit. It's got to be big enough so that you can lower your blade down in and then I drill a hole and then I can just drop my blade right down in and then cut out the inside part. Now. This, this does give you some rough cuts. You can see right around the corners, there's some pretty rough cuts there. But if you just take your sander and round those out, you don't even really need to use an, elect an electric one. You can use it by hand. And I actually do kind of top this off a little bit with some hand sanding as well. But I just go around those corners. You can see that before they're super rough. And then after just sanding the corners and the edges, I get everything down. Now, this is what happens to your board when you are cutting with a jigsaw this is the back side of the board so whatever part you don't want to show just that's the part that you're going to put down because you can see the other side it does not do that so i just made sure that that part was the back of my cutting board um, if you want to prevent this you can use the tape trick that i showed you earlier and that really does eliminate a lot of um, that chipping but again i didn't worry about it because we're not going to be using this really at all for a real cutting board it's just for looks and so I don't mind it'll just be on the back so I sanded those down really really good and then I put a um, a layer of Jacobian color from the brand the Minwax brand of stain on these and they actually have some really pretty detail in the wood this is just some basic thin plywood but you can see the detail that comes out of it now because I wanted it to look fairly real like a real cutting board I did go ahead and put um, some polyurethane varnish on it just so that they would look really smooth and you can see here that I just cut out those three cutting boards that are in there and then these are just these lemon plates from the Dollar Tree but you can change this out I had these up for summertime and now with fall coming up I will be changing them out for fall but here you can see the finished product I just drilled some holes in the back on the top and then hung this up and it actually is really stout and you guys I'm really impressed with how it turned out and it was really inexpensive to make the scrap wood was basically free so the cutting boards didn't cost me anything the bead board I didn't even use a whole sheet and a whole sheet was about $24 I didn't even use half of it so maybe $10 for the bead board and then there's the outer edge which you can get from Home Depot I think the, the pieces of wood were like $3 a piece so really overall this was probably like a $20 to $25 project for me and I just love the end result here soon you'll see it right next to the inspiration picture and I am so happy with how this turned out you guys this was so much fun to make all right guys so what do you think how did I do leave a comment down below and let me know what you think let me know if you like my version let me know just whatever you want to comment down below and thank you so much for those of you who are still here at the end 
For those of you who don't know, this is my end segment. This is purposely at the end because that way if you were just here for the DIY, you can click away and you do not have to watch this part. But I do try to share some inspiration at the end of each one of my videos. So for today's inspiration, I actually don't have a video to link down below for you, but I want to talk about a concept that I learned. So I actually learned about the power of positivity. Now I know you guys have heard that before, but recently we talked about a study that was done that I wanted to share with you guys that I thought was really interesting and then something that I'm going to be trying, so I'll follow up with you guys. So they took three professional bowling teams and they had them all bowl during their games and filmed them did highlights. Afterwards, they pulled the first group in and they told them everything that they were doing wrong. They only highlighted the negative, the bad, the parts that could be improved, and they told them everything was me that they had done wrong. The second team, they pulled them in and they were just neutral. They didn't really give them any feedback. They didn't really say what they had done wrong or what they had done right. They just basically said, this is what you did, just basically watch what you did and how you played. The third team, they gave them only positive feedback. That's it. They didn't highlight any of their errors, mistakes, nothing. They just told them how they did. Everything that was good and positive. And then they went out and they had all three teams bowl again. And so the team that they didn't really give any criticism, they improved just a little bit, but pretty much stayed the same. The team that they basically, the team that they gave all the negative to all of the negative feedback to, they bowled significantly worse the sex. They bowled significantly worse the second time. But the third team that they gave only positive feedback to when they went back out there, they bowled even better. They increased their percentage by, it was a big deal, I can't remember the percentage, but it was a big, big increase, and so they did better. So you guys, the power of positivity works. It's amazing. I mean, it is one study. But leave a comment down below if you guys have some examples about this, stories, things like that. And if you guys would like to take this challenge with me and find somebody in your life that you would like to, for a certain amount of time, just give positive feedback, I would love to hear about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for staying through the end. Please like the video, comment, share, all of the things. And if you would like to consider sticking around or if you'd like more content just like this or the end segments, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you guys stick around. Thank you guys for watching, for being here, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.